Go to any scientific conference and you are likely to encounter some really bad, bad slides. They might even be in your own presentation. This slide is showing results of a survey. It might be describing a great study, but it's hard to tell because there is so much crowded on the slide, it's extremely difficult to process everything shown. Invariably, the speaker would apologize for the unreadable table. This leads us to one general principle to keep in mind when creating slides. Don't ever show a slide for which you need to apologize. One principle that helps in the creation of better slides is minimalism. We're going to discuss minimalism with respect to when to use slides and how to create slides. Let's start with when to use slides. Hey Steve, you guys have a good weekend? Hey Kevin, yeah. Um, actually we did, we took a trip to DC. Oh. We, um, we took Amtrak to DC on Friday. All right. We stayed at the, uh, the Omni Shoreham in Woodley Park. Oh. And on Saturday, we spent the entire day at the National Zoo nice. with the boys. Nice. And on Sunday, we came back on the train to Durham. It was a great weekend. Thanks wow. for asking. Wow. The real world isn't like that because we don't need bullet points for effective communication. Your slides should support the storytelling. Your slides don't need to function as closed captioning for your story. People often have slides because they're unfamiliar with their talk and they're actually using them as speaking notes. But this puts demand on the audience because now they have to read the slides and listen to the speaker at the same time, when simply listening to the speaker would have been much easier. Now let's think about minimalism with respect to how to create slides. One of the greatest proponents of minimalism is Edward Tufte. To paraphrase one of his key ideas, Every pixel that you project requires cognitive effort to process. And because we want to minimize the cognitive effort required by the audience to understand our presentation, every pixel on the slide should be essential for understanding. One of the ways unnecessary pixels end up on the screen is through the use of templates found in popular presentation software packages. Ready-made templates for slides and figures are often cluttered with embellishments that add nothing to understanding and can sometimes distract the audience from your story. Let's analyze this slide template, which someone might use for a presentation with a healthcare theme. There's a lot of valuable slide real estate being wasted with these weird x-ray images on the left. They are also distracting because every new slide that contains these images will likely cause people to glance at them for a second to see if they have changed and maybe are conveying new information. The bar charts have been made using a 3D template that gives depth to the bars. Using a 3D display for only two variables will always introduce problems in interpretation. Not only are the extra pixels unnecessary to convey the point, but they also make it confusing for audience members who are trying to visually compare these bars. So be very careful when using templates that you are not inadvertently importing distracting pixels into your presentation. One thing that many of us can do to promote minimalism when creating slides is to reduce the number of words we put on the slide. So here's a typical looking slide with bullet points that are essentially a bunch of sentences. This is really just too much for people to read while they're trying to listen to you uh, they might be great sentences for you, the speaker, to have on hand. So great, just copy those and stick them in your presenter notes. But we want to make a bit more of a humane uh, viewing experience for the audience. So let's work in, on making this slide a little more effective. We can take each of these statements and reword them to make them shorter. Let's take a couple examples. There are too many instruments measuring the same health concept. Well, I might be saying those words. I don't need all those words up there. Could just put many measures of same concept. Similarly, many measures are too complex. Again, I might be saying that, but up on the screen, I really only need complex. So I could do this for each of those bullet points and make much shorter versions of these. As we look at this, we can also see there are some other things that I might do to make that even a cleaner slide. Do I really need these bullet points? 
they always come as a default in a lot of our templates, but they're really not adding a whole lot to uh, the meaning of this. So I can get rid of those and just clean that up. So let's look at how we've done comparing this to where we started. It's just a, a lot cleaner. And now I can make it even a little bit better if I like by adding a graphic that will quickly let people know that these are these are issues to look out for. And then I'll add builds so that these words appear as I'm talking about them. And so again, compare this to this really text heavy bullet laden slide. It's a uh, it's an improvement. In summary, there are two important lessons about minimalism. First, make only the slides that are necessary for understanding what you're saying. And the main focus should always be on what you are saying. And second, every pixel on the slide should be essential for understanding. If you can find some pixels that are not essential for understanding, remove them. It would be great if every presentation we gave was in a venue with bright, large projection screens like this. But you know, unfortunately, this situation is more the norm where we've got a screen size that's pretty small relative to the size of the room. Or we've got some contrast that's really poor because the room is too bright or the projector is too weak. In this case, this is a pretty influential presentation given at the boardroom of our academic medical center. And uh, it was almost impossible to read from the rear of the room for a variety of reasons. So to compensate for these types of real world situations, we need to be mindful of robust slide design. And we're gonna talk about contrast and font size as two really important ingredients for achieving robust slide design. Let's start with contrast. You know, a lot of our presentation software packages have all sorts of great templates that look really pretty on the screen, like this one, sort of a linen book cover. But it's a really low contrast template. It's going to make it very challenging in some of the settings we just saw. Compare it with this template or this one. Both of these are very high contrast. They're not as pretty looking as the other, but they're going to hold up much better in a situation like this where a colleague of mine needed to present what's actually a very good slide, but it was a very bright room. So keep this in mind when selecting the template you're going to use. You want to err on the side of, of much higher contrast than you might think is necessary. So let's turn to consider font size now. Here's another picture I took at a conference from the audience. There are just so many occasions like this when a great presentation is ruined by fonts that are too small for the audience to read easily in the room in which we're viewing them. So we know that we need to use large, clear fonts. Everyone hates it when people don't. And so why does it happen so often that we end up with a situation like this? It seems like we're not good at imagining how what's on our screens will look in different venues. So let's consider a few examples to illustrate this. Here's my computer and I'm going to open up PowerPoint and I'm going to make a few different slides. And for each of those slides, we're going to project those into this lecture hall. And this is going to be a view from the rear of the lecture hall. And this is what someone's going to see from the back of the room. This is a bright hall. So the contrast is not great. So it makes it a pretty realistic projection setting. Okay, so let's start with this slide, and this is a terrible slide. Don't ever make this slide. I just made this to help illustrate uh, font size here, and so we wanted to get sort of an approximate count of how many lines long this slide is, and this one, depending upon how you count, is about 20 lines long. So about 20 lines of possible text here. And if we project that into the lecture hall, this is what you get. So if you're in the back of that hall, there's really no way that you could read a slide that was based on about 20 lines of text. So let's go back and let's identify something to remove from this slide. So I'll take that out, which allows me to increase the font size. 
And now this slide is about 15 lines long. Let's project that. So that's some improvement, uh, even though some of the smaller lines are still a little harder to read. And as one more point of comparison, let's take this. We're going to cut out that section and increase the font. Now, if you were sitting at your desk making this slide, it may seem like uh, this is way too large. It's about 10, 10 total lines of uh, worth of, of text on here. If I project that, it's very easy to read that even from the back of the room and even under these conditions where the contrast is not super. So let's take all three of these and put them next to one another as a point of comparison. We've got the 20 lines worth, about 15 lines worth, and about 10 lines worth. And uh, it's good to keep in, in mind then something between 15 and 10 total lines worth of, of uh, text seems to be around the font size that is going to be the most robust. So in summary, the keys to robust slide design are slides with very high contrast and large fonts. Let's quickly summarize our key points for creating slides. First, don't show a slide for which you need to apologize. Use a slide only when it's necessary to help tell your story. Put on a slide only what's necessary to convey the point of the slide. And finally, use slides with high contrast and large fonts so your slides can be viewed easily in different presentation venues. This educational program is supported by a grant from the National Center for Advancing Translational Sciences. Communications are happening. Uh, I don't like saying you know. This is sounding like condescending. That's Lots of times people have slides. Lots of times, people. Lots of times, people have slides. Take two. Take three. To both read their notes and. Lots of times, people are using. 